welcome to Press Row. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm joined by Zach Bowers, Aaron Matthews, I Mark Shine <laughs> sitting in. He's upset he doesn't have a tie, but yeah, at I mean, least a sweater. Aaron, you look great, man. I think. You know, I do what I can, and you know, you guys help make me look good on TV, so it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> what you I don't think. realize is we're all jealous of you right now. Yeah. Why? Because I've got the jeans. <laughs> You're dressed down. <laughs> You're dressed casual. That's I figured dress casual today because tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. It's a little bit different. Right. Friday, only, Friday, I don't have to do so much. I can maybe <laughs> wear shorts if we don't get snow down in Columbus, but Thursday, Saturday, I'll, I'll be yeah. G'd up from the gonna feet up busy. like you guys. <laughs> going to be a busy weekend. We got state boys basketball tournament kicking off. Aaron says he'll be calling six games, yep. so good luck. We'll have, and we'll have all 12 games on 93-1 The Fan, and the LCC game on Thursday night will be on both 104.9 The Eagle and 93-1 The Fan. And if the birds win on Thursday, their Saturday game will be a simulcast on both as well. Perfect. So we've got you covered grind. all oh, over it. radio, television. So let's get started. Talk about those upcoming games. With Get started with LCC. They're taking on Chaminade Julian on Thursday night. Will we have a rematch of last year's state final with LCC and VASJ? Wow, as all the eyeballs come to me. <laughs> I'm going to say wow. yes. Uh, I think we, all, we okay, agree on pressure's this. Pressure's on the voice of the T-Birds, I <laughs> yeah. see. Um, I hope so. I, I like this matchup, first of all, guys. Um, they played each other back in February. It was a 10-point win for LCC. And really what catapulted LCC to that win was the second half play of the team defense. Christian Montague, their point guard, is a sophomore. In my opinion, he's a future Division I player. He is very good. He's very quick. He's not afraid of contact. He can be very physical. And in the first half of their game with LCC at Monsignor Herd Gymnasium, he set the tone for CJ. And he took the LCC defense out of their game for that first half. And I don't know if they got coached up or what at halftime. I don't even think he got a shot off <laughs> in the second half. They need more of that coming up on Thursday. But they've also got a young man named Alan Vest who's going to Wright State. His brother Matt played at Wright State. His dad played at Wright State. Wright State was the only school he would even talk to in the whole recruiting process, guys. <laughs> I think they're a good team. I think LCC is a quicker of the two teams. And I think we'll see LCC in the championship. I hope we'll see LCC in the championship because <laughs> it's going to make Saturday just that much more fun for me. But, you know, we, as last year, everybody said, oh, it's a foregone conclusion. VASJ is going to run the table. Didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Hashtag championship rings. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I hope so. Well, I think there's a concern here, and that is the fact that when you lose, mm -hmm. as has happened before, when Salman Julian lost before, you go into the game, and Coach State has coached like 700 games. You're going to go in there and say, okay, we didn't win because, and we're going to make these changes. The, the winning team has a tendency of going, okay, you know what, we won, we'll just do it over again. And so you have to figure out a way, are the adjustments going to work or not? Certainly the birds will be favored, and as Lima reses, we all hope they succeed. And they're favored, but there's always that unknown factor. What will that coach do coming into this game that they've lost before? One other thing, too, and you talked about coaches in 700 games. Coach Joe Staley's been the head coach for 30 years yeah. at CJ. 398 wins. They win two this weekend. He gets 400. Josh Sedgister of Tri-Village, 198 yeah. wins. Hmm. He gets two wins. He gets number 200. So there's a couple it's historical a mile number. It's a couple yeah. milestones that could go down this weekend as well, and some of the superlatives surrounding the tournament. Well, on the sake of brevity, I'm just going to say yes. I hope so. I hope you're to see a good the man. There. You are a good man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it should be interesting to see. I, we were just talking on Mark's Madness that you know Carlton Bragg, 6'10", and yeah. you know he really wasn't that much of a factor in last year's state title game. He, of course, he was a factor, but not what he could be and what you know the top recruit in the nation going to Kansas. You got to figure that he'll have a little revenge on his mind should we get to that point. I, I thought they played soft last year. I thought last year when they came together, I thought it the uh, don't know St. Joe kind of went. You know what? We got this. It's it's over. We got it. Don't sweat. And by the time they, the teachers were smacked them in the face, they went, Oh, wait a minute. These guys are pretty good. Hmm. Jake Williams has a big game. Corey Stewart pops up has a big game. Martinez had that huge three at oh, the horn. And, the and first a couple half. of yep. you know rainbow threes in size. By huge Simpson, game for Martinez. You know, yeah. It, it, all of a sudden, St. Joe goes, Whoa, we lost. Hmm. And I would not expect that to happen this year. When you're seniors and you've been through that before, I would not that expect yeah, that to happen they'll again. Be ready. They will be ready. All right, so those games will be taking place at the Schottenstein Center, and that's one of my favorite venues to cover high school basketball. Let's get yours. What are your favorite high school ven venues for boys basketball? And let, we can exclude the Schottenstein Center because this it's... This sounds like a five and five question. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It could be. Yeah, it could be. A five, it's a good five and five question as well. I but I want to get your answers now. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, well, I broke mine kind of into two separate um, 
thinking patterns here. First, I just thought, okay, the times I've spent watching the tournament games in the postseason, thinking about through those guys. We've talked a little bit about Kettering and Trent Arena there, and not maybe one of the favorites for media per se, but I like the style of the bull type atmosphere. You're surrounded by the fans. It just feels like you're playing down under. Um, so Kettering, I really like. And then I'll tell you what, I was at Toledo picking up, or there for Lima Senior just briefly. And when that place is full, Division One, of course, when that place is full, I tell you, the atmosphere was rocking. It felt um, just, ex you could feel the excitement in the air, the air for the Lima Seniors. They were having a good game. So for the postseason, I'd say Kettering and uh, Toledo. You two are young pups. Mark, you'll probably remember this in the early part of the 2000s in the throwback 44 <laughs> game with OG and St. V the other night. Oh. That used to be a oh. double dip regional final. It would yeah. be the D2, the D1, whether it was Upper Sandusky being there with John Diebler. Um, you throw in, of course, OG when, you know, and them knocking off, and then you throw in these D1 games. Toledo being there again for the Lima Senior game and having the privilege to call that. That, I mean, it put it back up there on the list. I'm, yeah. I still love the fact of being on the floor at Stroh Center, hmm. whereas opposed to when it was Anderson Arena and the old building, you were up top. But locally, I'm going to go with my spot at LCC <laughs> and at the Elida Fieldhouse. Those two play. I love yeah, doing locally, games. Yeah. I love doing games at the Elida Fieldhouse. I love that halfway up, right at center court, or just off at about the foul line. You're basically a foul line extended. Yeah, I love gym. that spot there at, at the field house, too. Well, I, t I forgot to mention real quickly my other thinking pattern as I split it into two, which is the ones I've played in. And for me, that was the Elida Field House, Aaron. Some of the, well, even the sectional district games I played in there are regular season mm -hmm. games. When that place is filled up, I don't know if there's a better place in the area uh, to play. And anytime you can walk through the HVAC system to broadcast the game, <laughs> yeah. I'm down yeah. with it. I love Plus Spencerville. I love Spencerville. Spencer, Spencerville. Uh, well, what we've forgotten is UT is a tremendous facility. But they completely changed it. Yes. That place yeah, used did. to be when, you know, up so high, you couldn't get much feel for the game when you, because you were so high up mm -hmm. in certain mm -hmm. circumstances. But now they've remodeled it. It's a much better fan facility as well. Mm -hmm. Locally, I'm going to go kind of, because I like old places. I like the Salina Fieldhouse, and certainly Elida. It's not old, but it was built in the 70s. It's a great place. I really like to go into Bob Arnson Gymnasium <laughs> in Delphus. Okay, it's a knowledgeable fan set, it's a good coaching staff, it's good players, and it's a facility where you sit right on top of the court. It's not very media friendly, I mean, we all know that because of the age when it was built. And you walk into place and it's got Bob Arnzen like <laughs> atmosphere, it, you know, it, it, it I reeks just like of that tradition place. in the most positive way. It reeks what, of tradition. What's the big word? Reeks. <laughs> yeah, it does that too. Yeah. <laughs> you ever been up on top there where they push I all have. those bleachers in? I have. Oh boy. They, yeah. Then they realize, oh, there's still people up top there. They come flying, and it's it's hilarious. I mean, they come over in a pack, and they're pulling all those bleachers out, yeah. and there you go. You can get back down, and you feel much better about life because you don't want to scale those bleachers, right. especially when you got about 25 pounds of equipment on your back. <laughs> those are all good choices. I just want to mention St. Henry. I enjoy that place mm -hmm. for a big, you know, big MAC contest, and they feel like thinking of the game against Marion Local, that's a great atmosphere. But, you know, there's great atmospheres throughout the area, which right. is one of the reasons Without I love a doubt. covering high school basketball. Matt, I was at St. Henry a few years ago for a big game, and they played that Zombie Nation song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought the entire roof was going to come <laughs> off the facility <laughs> because great. the crowd was so into it. It's an intimate, you're, it's a good place. You're right. Yeah. All right, let's go to college hoops now and the NCAA tournament getting set for the second weekend. Kentucky still undefeated. They got to be the favorite till someone knocks them off. Can anyone knock them off? My bracket sheet says Wisconsin wins the whole thing. Mm. Now, my bracket sheet also forgot that Vanilla Nova was a bunch of soft kids who couldn't play under competition. <laughs> so now those guys are gone. But I, I think Wisconsin can. They have enough size. They have enough experience. They shoot the ball well enough from the perimeter. And I like their grittiness. They just seem to find a way to win games. They're behind in the Big Ten championship game. Michigan State's made this tremendous run, and they were able to turn it around and, and win the basketball game. I think Wisconsin can, and I think they will. I think Wisconsin's the team that can. I don't know if they will, but I think if it turns into a jump shooting game, if these two meet up in the semifinal, then it does favor Wisconsin. I also think if there's a team in the regional, it's Notre Dame. Hmm. That could be that team yeah. that could potentially do the trick as well. But, I mean, right now, my bracket says Kentucky. I think they win it. But it will be a very close game if them and Wisconsin do meet up. Well, now you asked us, can anyone? And I think that, the, that somebody can. That Kentucky has shown that they're very beatable at times. Um, will, I mean, that's a different question as to whether or not someone will. But I think this past game against Cincinnati, they shot 37% from the field Kentucky did. If they continue with that shooting percentage, I think that we're going to find here that uh, one of these few teams mentioned are going to beat Kentucky. 
Wisconsin will have to get through Arizona first. I'm looking forward to that yeah. game. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a regional final, I believe, to get to the final four. And like you said, Notre Dame and uh, Kentucky has a pretty easy way through the rest of their region to the final four, in my opinion. But Mo Notre Dame might be a game to watch. All right, lower tier college basketball tournaments now. Let's talk those. The, the uh, NIT, the CBI, do they matter? Are they worth it? Or is it all about to the NCAA? Who? Worth it to who? Yeah. That's my question. But of course they're worth it to the schools. Right. Well, to the, the players, thing. I think. Most people don't realize this is like, other than the NIT, the CBI, the CIT, the ESPN, or whatever they're called, those are pay-to-play tournaments. Those schools mm -hmm. are actually forking over money to participate in those. I, I, for one, don't mind the NIT. I think it's a, it's reputable. It has the tradition behind it. dates back forever. Yeah. Um, They're at Bowling Green. They have the banners hanging right next to the NCAA banners, the yep. NIT yeah, banners. And their, women, their women's team made a strong run, yeah. the WNIT, a couple years ago. And I think the, the, the NIT is, so you know, it's something, I guess you could say, that does carry a little bit, doesn't carry as much. It's not a team goal per se. Hey, let's go make the NIT. Yeah. But, you know, as we saw, I mean, for Ohio State, for Dayton, it's worked out quite nicely in the last few years, too, when they've made that and won it. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're a player. And many of the schools last week were on spring break. Take your pick. You can be on the beach in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> or you can play a tournament game to say we're number 200 in the country. <laughs> and I don't think a lot of players actually want to be involved if you can't be yep. in the NCAA. Maybe the NIT, because you're right, it does have some tradition to it. I think you get below that. A lot of the players are going... I'm checking out of this one. And I think that's, and that's a big thing, too, that you see some of these programs like Toledo, for example. Didn't, they, they had an opportunity to yeah. accept yeah. the postseason bid, and they declined it because, you know, their guys are checked out. There was, you know, talking with Todd Walker last week on our way up to Toledo for the senior high game. He thought that some of the guys from, from BG had already checked out as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they won their first game. They end up getting beaten their second game in the, uh, in the CIT tournament, whatever it was called. But it's just it's the same thing as Mark said. I think guys check out. You mm -hmm. got the opportunity to be on the beach. You've had a four-year basketball career. You're tired. You're beat up. You just want to go have some fun, relax, and enjoy <laughs> life because in five weeks, you're done with college. Right. All right, cool. Good stuff. Let's finish up talking some baseball. Opening day, I think it's less than two weeks away now. So we've got April, the – April 6th. April 6th is Monday, Sunday night. The Cubs and the Cards will get together on April 5th for the official first pitch. So is this the year – for the Cubs or the and or the Indians to break their curses and get a World Series ring. If How you many years has it been? For How the many Cubs, years? it's 1908, been 1908, so 107, 108. 107. My but wife's I'm, a Cubs fan, so it's 107. I hear the number. I'll tell your wife I'm sorry because it's probably going to be 109. I don't. Th I mean, well, the <laughs> they're Indians, moving in the right direction. The we Indians agree on that. got the got the uh, side jinx put on them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know, and the way I look at things when it comes to the AL Central, they're still a third place baseball team until they prove otherwise, <laughs> uh -huh. thanks to the Detroit Tigers. But that being said, I think the Cubs will be the closer. Chris Bryant, if he if they bring him up, that's the sixty four thousand dollar question in Chicago right now. Is Chris Bryant with his nine home runs in spring training? Will he be on that opening day roster? I'd I don't say think 50, so. 50. I don't think so. Only because they can keep him under club control for a whole extra year if they wait until. And I don't think, I think they have to April wait 19th. that. Yeah, they don't have to wait that long. It's two weeks. So right. you know, it sucks for Cubs fans on opening day who want to. He's going to pull a hammy here, kids. <laughs> <laughs> He'll start in the minors, but he's he's a prospect you want to keep your eye on. The guy can go. Their whole their whole minor league system is just impressive, and the young guys that the Cubs have developed and brought in, especially since Theo Epstein took over. I mean, they're going to be a fun ball club to watch, I think. They might, maybe not this year, but quite possibly next year could be that year. But I don't know. That's, that's National <laughs> well, League Baseball. I'm more concerned about the Tigers. Okay. <laughs> okay. A, nobody but a guy who used to work for MLB would care with the high school <laughs> tournament and the NCAA going on right now. So that's, that's part one. Part two is uh, the Cubs are not as close as the Indians are this year, but right. neither one of them will get there and break their jinx. And number three, I want the Cubs to stink because when they do, I can go online. I can get tickets to see the Reds play at Wrigley, uh -huh. enjoy the day, stop at Giardello's for pizza on the way yes! home, and have a great day. So I want the Cubs to stink. Well, there you go. It's settled. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was pretty, That's pretty accurate right there. Yeah. Point shine. Bring him back for more. <laughs> Basketball still going on, so opening day will take a back seat. Mark's going to stop at Giardello's, hit up Wrigley Field, and then baseball season will take its spot mm -hmm. in the summer. So thank you guys for joining us on Press Row. That's going to do it. Enjoy your games this weekend. We'll see you next week.